Ow, let me check you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. So I have two girls that are due to give birth very soon. Barely here is a Nigerian dwarf. Her due date's today. And she's been looking really, really close for a few days. Her ligaments have been really soft, but the only thing is her udder just really hasn't matched her wide belly. She's huge. I don't know how many kids she's gonna have, but I think it's gonna be more than two. She's given us two in the last couple seasons. I think she's got at least three in there. This here is Talia. Talia's three days overdue officially. She's got her ligaments, but they're real, real squishy. I'm gonna let Talia out for at least for now because I can still feel ligament and her udder is really growing, but she, she might be feeling things. Hello, Calamity. Can we check you? You don't even want to get up. Can you see what your udder's doing? <laughs> see, she's dropped real good. Yeah, she might be having contractions. Let me see back here. Yeah, I think she's having contractions. She looks kind of sunken in back there. So Talia here is a first freshener. The second I thought I saw that maybe her body was reacting to a contraction, she started to kind of, they have this mini panic where they're like, oh goodness, what is that? You could just tell on their face. Um, she did that milliseconds after I thought she was starting to have a contraction. So I think she is in early labor. I'm gonna stand down here in the barn for a little while. Just kind of watch her. I want to keep her out of the stall as long as possible. She is one of my standard goats and having the ability to walk around and really get those babies or the one baby, I think she's gonna just have one. She's pretty small. But in any case, to get the baby or babies into a ideal position, having the ability to move around is gonna help achieve that so come on come, let's go out here so if you've been with us a little while you'll know that Christine our brown La Mancha she just delivered her little baby uh, a few weeks ago he's right here this is little buckwheat he's a little bit skittish like his mom but if you saw Buckwheat's birth, you'll remember that I had Christine in a stall for her entire labor. And a lot of the reason for that is because she's skittish. I don't think that it would have been wise for me to just kind of let her out and be out. I feel like it would have stressed her out when she got close to uh, delivering Buckwheat. The fact that I'd be trying to catch her and wrangle her to put her in a stall. Talia, being a bottle baby and super social, I know that she's just going to follow me wherever I need need her to be and so she can be out here for much longer she trusts me a lot more you're gonna keep a good eye on her today I'm gonna go get some breakfast she's having a contraction right now it's all right baby I can tell it's okay I can tell that she's having contractions. They are pretty light right now, but as soon as she starts to kind of seem a little bit freaked out about what her body's doing, if you look at their back end when they're doing that and their vulva starts puckering inward a little bit, that's a contraction. She's making all kinds of baby talk noises. Like most of the goats, all they're doing out here is chewing their cud. They're soaking up the sun, but she's making these cute little low nickering sounds. And if you have goats, you know, that's baby talk. She's talking to her baby on the inside. And that's another real good indication that she is in early labor. 
Well, it's milking time now, and I've been checking on Talia every couple hours. Right now, her and Barely both are out with the other girls grazing in the field. Sometimes it's really hard to call them in for milking, but I definitely need them here. Go! Howdy go! Go! Howdy go! Here they come. Where's Barely? So I actually have not been separating any kids from any mamas overnight. Um, the reason for that is twofold. So I have these two girls that are due to deliver literally any hour now. And I have three kidding stalls. And the point of that is so I can have two for mamas and their babies. And then one for the babies that I'm separating out at night. Well, ever since we got the hole in our roof uh, probably six or so weeks ago from a really bad windstorm. Uh, the roof over the kidding stalls hasn't really been the same. We've done what we can to patch it up for now, but the middle stall leaks really badly. And so we've had some rain. I've got a bucket in there that catches the rain, but I don't really want to put anyone in a wet stall. So I have been leaving them out, but it also works out well and fine because I've been waiting to get my electric milker. I just bought a Caprolite milker to uh, help me with milking my goats so if I were to try to milk out all eight by hand after putting all the kids away my arm would be on fire <laughs> by the end I've got something up with my elbow and so I've been taking it easy but this is Margie with her triplets still on her there's probably a quart of milk right there maybe a little bit less but it's still really really impressive so we usually get about a gallon a day when I leave all of the babies out which is still really awesome but it won't be long now until my Caprolite milker gets here I'll be sure to show that to you guys when it comes Do you have a discharge? Am I seeing discharge? That's what I thought. Good girl, you're doing so good, baby. Yes, you're doing so good. You too, you too, you know. He does, he loves birth. <laughs> a good boy. So Marzi here, our livestock guardian dog. He's a year and a half old and he is doing really good around these goats and the baby goats especially. Considering that I am not a professional livestock garden, guardian trainer and I know there are some things that we didn't do exactly perfectly with training him, but goodness is he good. I don't necessarily think that I would be comfortable having one of my does give birth not inside the kidding stall without me here. We may try it with Tali today, just so I can supervise how he will react during a uh, live birth. And if he's gonna be really stressful to the girls. And if he is, we'll absolutely go in the kidding stall. But I kinda wanna see with my supervision how he would do just in case I happen to miss a birth. I mean, it's gonna happen one of these days. It almost happened with Pepper in November. I know, Pesky. I haven't forgotten you. I just got distracted. You ready? <laughs>
put you in a stall soon. That's a good string. So she's definitely got a pretty decent little mucus trail going over there. I still don't see super hard contractions, um, but maybe that's just not her process. You gonna go graze? Are you thinking about staying here? <laughs> you are, aren't you? Do you want to stay here? It's okay. the nose. You're good. I feel two feet in the nose. Look. Look. You can do it. You just gotta lay down and do it. It's right there. Yeah. Good girl. It's right there. <laughs> you gotta give it the rest of the way. You can, you can do it. It's not out yet. Yeah, the bubble did pop. Foot go. It's back there. Okay. Good girl. You push. Baby keeps tucking one leg back. I'm gonna have to hold it.
girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Very good. Good girl, Tolly. There we go. Havoc never disappoints. Oh. Do you think she has another one? Yeah. Do you think she's got a twin in there? Because how small it is, she looks. That like is a small baby, baby, isn't it? It's like a big Nigerian. There's something bouncing, but I don't think it's. I think it's placenta. You're pulled too. Yeah. Your daddy made you pulled. Is it she precious? Yeah. I have not weighed her, but she's nice and dry. Mom has been nursing her. Talia is not acting like a first time mom at all. She acts like she knows exactly what she's doing, which is a humongous blessing. <laughs> and look at those little ears. Okay. So her sire is our Nigerian dwarf Havoc. Havoc has moon spots and is pulled. It doesn't look like he gave her any moon spots, which is totally fine. She's completely this light gold color, except for this tiny little white spot on her pole. And she is pulled, so she's naturally hornless. Havoc has been throwing that a lot lately, and so has Margie, so I haven't had to do very many despottings this season, which is kind of nice. Oh, grunt, grunt. Her eyes are gold too, and they basically match her hair, which is super fun. Oh, she's so soft. I know, mm -mm. I just love you. You too, your mama wants you back. So, one down, one to go. We still have big old Barely to deliver. You ready for me to check you? Mm -hmm. No, we want to get out of here. <laughs> she has really hated being checked. Yep. Oh, I think your udder's growing. <laughs> so no surprise, she doesn't appear to have any ligaments. Her ligaments have been super soft and essentially non-existent for around five days. And her line likes to do that. Um, she comes out of my Rory line and eventually I am gonna do like a lineage video, but I think I'm gonna wait until after our kidding season is done. But my Rory line likes to have super, super squishy ligaments for the longest time. But I think her udder is starting to grow. So 
So I'm gonna let Barely run around with the herd today, a lot like I did with Talia yesterday. I don't know if she's gonna deliver today. She may, but as always, I'll keep you posted. If you wanna catch up on this season's kidding season, I've got a playlist right here. We only have a few more girls left and then the season is done. And I had mentioned it briefly, but this video is in that playlist as well. This is the video where Pepper almost delivered her baby out with the herd. <laughs> 